Hello and welcome to another Community Conversation. I'm Michael Witch for LMC Media. And on the screen with me today is Daniel Zauderer. Uh, Daniel, you're no stranger to our community, right? That's right, yeah. I lived in Largemont from 1990 to 2006 is when I graduated from Amaranek High School. And then uh, you went to college and now, I believe you're in uh, the Bronx. You're living in the Bronx and working there? Well, I, I live on the Upper East Side and I work in the South Bronx in the Mott Haven neighborhood of the South Bronx. And I know you're a sixth grade teacher and it's a charter school. And you've got a, a really cool project that you Thank started. You. Um, we want you to tell us about it. It's called the Mott Haven Fridge. What's yes. That? Yeah. So some people have called it a makeshift food pantry. Um, uh, others have called it, a, you know, I, I know that one reporter early on said, you might wonder why somebody tossed this refrigerator out on the street. So what it really is, is it's literally a refrigerator mm -hmm. on the street, on the sidewalk, plugged into a local business, filled uh -huh. with donated food, and wow. it's available for anyone, no questions asked, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that, that's what a community fridge is. And we're not the only one. I opened up one in Mod Haven, and then we opened up a second one in Mod Haven. And then slowly, we weren't, we weren't the first, we were sort of in the middle. And then slowly, um, before you knew it, there were over 100 community refrigerators in New York. So it's really wow. just, um, we're, we're just a small part of an incredible movement. That's very when you say When you say we, is, are they your students at the school who've helped you do this or other community members or both? Yeah, all of the above. So I started this with my coworker, Charlotte Alvarez. She's a sixth grade teacher at the American Dream School. And that's the name of the school I work at. The Amer I'm wearing our logo, the American Dream School. We work with um, children of mostly of undocumented Central American and Mexican and Caribbean immigrants. And anyway, so this all started because when the pandemic hit, our Mod Haven community was just totally devastated. These were our people, our students' families are people that are mostly undocumented, so they don't have any federal benefits. And they were also working in jobs that were totally dependent upon normal economic activity. They were waiters, they were bus boys, they were house cleaners, they were construction workers. So they lost their jobs. They were living in really close living quarters. So COVID took it, you know, really hit home there. And they also shared that they were, many of them were scared to ask for help or didn't know where to go to feed their families. And so that's kind of how it started. That's how the idea sort of, that was the first genesis of, 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 of thinking about coming up with a solution. Actually, I Googled your name and uh, saw an article that was uh, in the teacher's college, uh, on a teacher's college site. And you were quoted as, as saying, uh, teachers need to respond holistically to the needs of children and their families. So I have a hunch that this uh, fridge uh, came out of that concept of reaching the kids and reaching the families and helping them meet their hunger needs. Yeah, I mean, a, a hungry kid is a kid who can't learn, right? So if we don't take care of those, those basic needs, if we don't take care of kids being well-fed and being fed with healthy food at that, then how are we going to expect them to do the higher order thinking that some of these next generation common core standards are, are requiring us teachers to teach, Right, so it, it's got to be a whole package for sure. Yeah. So, where did the food donations come from? Great question. So, we have food donations from all around the all around New York. So, yesterday I had a truck driver that we work with drive down to Nine Million Reasons Food Pantry in Queens. They had some extra pallets of mixed vegetable boxes, and we picked up mixed vegetable boxes. And then this morning. Our trucker came and he dropped off over a hundred boxes of mixed vegetables to the community. And they, they were out there and you should have seen a whole assembly line formed of community members. And we were just passing the boxes from the truck down the assembly line of community members, either into the fridge or next to the fridge to be distributed out to people directly in the community. So 
can can uh, people can families in the Marinick and Larchmont uh, contribute food as well or donate money to help the cause? Absolutely, yeah. So that's what been one of the most amazing parts of this for me is that I guess you could call me a Larchmont native son in the sense that I was, you know, I really spent all my childhood in, in Larchmont. You know, I I, I grew up in playing in Flint Park and Manor Park and and my dad kept his boat in, in Nichols, you know, and 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 later on in the Mariner Beach and Yacht Club as a kid, we belonged to Orienta Beach Club, you know. I mean, I, I was really a, a large my kid. Um, and what's been really amazing about this opportunity about starting a fridge, a community fridge, is just seeing how much interest there's been from people in the suburbs to help. So every Saturday we have families that drive down in their own vehicles, right? Whether it's an SUV or pickup truck or a sedan with their kids. And we distribute boxes from the Hunts Point Terminal Market that we've gotten from the Hunts Point Terminal Produce Market. And then what these families do is they act as what's called last mile food distributors, food distributors. And they bring the food with their kids to these community refrigerators, making sure that the people that are the hardest to reach are getting access to the food that they so badly need to be able to feed their families. So, so what kinds of food are the uh, best ones to donate if people want to bring down a couple boxes of uh, food? Mm. So our biggest need right now is actually for drivers. So in other words, if a family were to sign up on our volunteering form, which I know they'll, they'll put down below for you at modhavenfridge.com. Right. If somebody were to sign up there, then they would then be alerted to driving opportunities. And what that means is that we already work with lots of food suppliers, lots of food distributors throughout the Bronx, throughout Queens, throughout the metropolitan area, right? But what we don't have is we don't have the volunteer, we don't have enough volunteer drivers to pick up that food and move it the last mile to the people who really need it. So the way that our suburban families have really been able to help, because a lot of them have some spare time on the weekend and they want to expose their kids to this level of hunger. I mean, because kids growing up here, they're used to having a fridge filled with food. I mean, most of them, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say that everybody is fortunate, but you, you know, I knew that when I grew up, I wasn't thinking about having an empty fridge. You know, I wasn't thinking about being greeted by an empty fridge. So I think parents love the opportunity of being able to pick up food somewhere with their kids and then delivering it to a community fridge where right. they see that food go into the hands of community members mm -hmm. immediately. I mean, these fridges get emptied out in under an hour. A full fridge goes from full to empty in under an hour. Um, right. In terms of, so really we could use their volunteering help. And the other thing that we could use is two kinds of donations. Food donations are fine, but again, so that is one thing that people could give. You know, we love eggs. We love milk. Those are the things that go really quickly. We love fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, we love all those things. If people wanted to prepare meals, as long as they put them in Tupperware containers and labeled them with a date of preparation, then that would be okay too. Mm -hmm. If people wanted to bake things and individually wrap those things and label them with a date of preparation, that would be fine too. So there are lots of ways to help in that regard. But really the most impactful thing that people can do is either volunteer with their wheels. Because again, the biggest issue is moving the food to where it needs to go. It's a logistics challenge. So that's one thing that they can do. And then the other thing that they can do is give us a monetary donation. Because what we like to be able to do is reimburse our volunteers. Not everybody comes from the suburbs. So we like to be able to reimburse our volunteers for gas and toll money. And so that costs money. We also, you know, I had a truck driver pick up a hundred boxes yesterday from the pantry. That's not free. I had to pay that truck driver. So there are real costs associated with this. We're getting a 501c3. We're about to be able to take tax deductible donations and we can really use the, the financial support. So the easiest way to donate is just to go to the website? Yeah, so the out. easiest way to donate is for folks to just go to www.motthavenfridge.com, M-O-T-T-H-A-V-E-N. F R I D G E dot com, and then just click on. There'll be a number of links, and I think the set the first link is volunteer, and the second link is donate because those are the two most important things. 
that people can do right now in order to make sure that the people that are the hardest to reach in terms of getting food to them are able to get food. So. Well, this is a wonderful project, Dan. Thank you so much. And I, I thanks so much for reaching out to us and, uh, and hopefully there'll be a, a good response from our community. And, you know, I love the idea of course of helping people in need, but also the idea that it builds community. Um, because we need so much more of that these days. Well, I, yeah, let me, I mean, one of the things that, that's really inspired me about this work, our motto is neighbors helping neighbors, because we really feel that this model of community fridges, because they are anonymous and because they're 24 seven and because they're all access, what they do is they disrupt the hierarchy between giver and receiver and they put everybody on a level playing field. And for example, you'll see my students' families that use the fridge to feed their kids. They also are the same families who volunteer to clean the fridge. They're the same families who volunteer to distribute food out of the fridge. So I think that that's one of the most beautiful things. It's just really a wonderful example of, of communities coming together in a time of need to, to help in, in unprecedented ways, so. Well, thanks again, Dan Zouder and uh, the Mott Haven Fridge Project. Uh, thanks for spending the time with us and telling us all about it. Thank Bye -bye. you so much, really great to be here.